So today we just finished um, our three-day foundations program in Nottingham, <coughs> um, in the studio called Yoga Squad, which is one of our graduate studios, a beautiful studio by a castle and a canal. It was like a you know fairy tale location, um, and you know we just had an amazing three days. Um, people coming in and working on themselves and transforming uh, their lives, um, and uh, you know you could see that in their eyes and their faces how the work that we did yesterday uh, had impacted them. They've already you know shifted and cleared stuff, um, and there was just like a lightness, a joyfulness. Um, in them, so I got up this morning, and um, <clears throat> you know, normally I meditate for you know one to four hours, but my schedule has been crazy, and I've been tired. So you know, once every couple of weeks, I call it like my reset, where I just sleep in, you know, four to six hours. Sorry, six to eight hours, just to like top up my sleep, and then after that, I'm on again. Um, so I was exhausted last night. I fell asleep, <clears throat> you know. Um, before I planned to go to sleep. So I got up this morning and I didn't really do my meditation. I had to get some work done just because, you know, we're going to Sri Lanka. Anyway, long story. And I was driving and, you know, I was kind of pretty close to the time, the start time. But I noticed, as opposed to the last two mornings, you know, this morning, because I was a bit later, the sun was already up. And it was a beautiful, crisp morning and, you know, I was driving and I purposely stayed out you know, in the countryside because I want to just drive through the countryside and take in the nature. So while I was driving, I had the idea to, you know, I knew that I wanted to do a meditation, but I thought actually rather than do a seated meditation first, why don't we, um, where do we do a walk, walking meditation, you know, which, is, which I've done before and we lead um, walking meditations in like our teacher training programs, for example. So I thought, yeah, why not? And, and, um, Sometimes I, you know, I just do that. Um, I just follow whatever inspiration, whatever guidance I have. Um, same with really all our programs. You know, there was some of the awakened programs, and you know, I might have planned roughly like, oh, maybe this would happen, and then in the moment, you know, or that morning when I woke up, you know, there's one. I remember one awakened where there was stuff like really stirring up on the second day, and I got up that morning and I thought, wow, what am I going to do? How am I going to sh help shift this energy in the group? So I didn't know and I just sat in meditation for a few hours and I just, I saw this exercise that we were going to do which got everyone involved and everyone got something out of it and I just saw it in my mind. So when I came in the morning I said to my team, I want this, this, this done and even they didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> so everyone was, you know, in the unknown and we just went for it and today was less of that but you know, we went for a walk and it was just beautiful. So the meditation was about walking and um, being present. You know, and these days it's called mindfulness. Um, but you know, getting present with the breath, getting present with the body, paying attention to each step and how it feels to take a step, um, how it feels in the body, and how it feels to connect to the earth, um, how it feels to actually breathe the air, and you know, like if it's cold or crisp air. Um, the sounds, the birds around, you know, and the temperature on the skin and just everything around so that, you know, you start to get a sense of that we're, we, we are connected to everything that is around us. Um, and sometimes people have troubles, you know, they, they believe they have trouble sitting down in meditation because they think, you know, it has to be sit, seated and quiet and not moving. Um, so that was just perfect to start the day and we did it in silence so no one's actually talking things that you know are, are kind of like just useless topics which you know we all do we just talk about stuff because we're just talking to fill up space and everyone just stopped and got silence and focused in Let your awareness merge in with this wide, expansive, infinite space.
and now bring your awareness to the heart center in the space behind the chest bone and the spine your energetic heart center your awareness in your heart space and as you zoom in and focus in the energy around this space in your heart center what happens is like when you commit when you decide in life the universe matches it the universe meets you with what you put out if you put out no I can't I'm just on yeah, okay that's what you get because that's the vibration that's the energy that you're sending out but if you're saying to the universe this is it I'm doing this find a way make it happen so the universe in all its infinite wisdom goes, okay, if you feel you're worthy, here you are. Do you ever notice we get what we feel we're worth? Do you ever notice that? Like the universe has to match what you feel is your worth. You know, or what you decide with clear intention. So if you, if, even if your mind's saying, I don't know how, but you say, no, that's, that's it. It's happening. There's no two ways about it. The universe goes, okay, well, I guess there's no other choice then. There's only one option, which is it's happening. And it's already happens in the future now. <laughs> so here you go, all the resources, doors open up, things happen. And then you're like, wow, that's a coincidence. How did that happen? Or, you know, you get kind of like magic moments show up. Things happen, doors open. And suddenly, there you are. <laughs> Press your feet down to the ground. Good. Pull belly button up towards the spine. Squeeze elbows into the ribs. Squeeze elbows into the ribs. Squeeze elbows into the ribs. Pull tops of shoulders back. Is that easy? No. No, right? Some people think, oh, I don't want to put my knees down. It's going to be too easy. I can't do it. I'm not going to get anything out of it. Was it easy? No. No. It's a block. Why do we use the block? To engage not so much your glutes, but your quads. And rotate the thighs in. Sometimes maybe it's not just hitting the teaching points the way they are presented. Because I kept on focusing on square hands. They're not square onto that wall. They're not square onto that wall. And I kind of tried to twist them. And I know that I have a lot of habits. Like that soft knee. From, from teaching people to try not to hyperextend the knees, I kind of constantly do things on bended knees, yeah. so that it's like automatic thing. You overcompensate. Yes. You kind of like overcompensate, and you do this thing where the people who are leaving to the toilet should hear this, but too bad they're not going to hear it. Um, <laughs> you also think of things in kind of straight lines, which a lot of people do. So like when you're saying, oh, this hip needs to be square to that wall, or this thing needs to be followed this line, or that needs to be that line. You know, you're, not, you're more focused on straight lines than what your body is saying to you. If you listen, start to listen to your body, you'll be like, that knee is not happy right now. Mm-hmm. Or that ankle needs an adjustment. Okay, let me move this, let me move that, let me move this, let me adjust this, let me feel that. Oh, okay, that's much better. So then you're not so worried about straight lines. It's more, okay, what's the feedback that my body is giving me right now and that I, that I can adjust? So, yeah, I've said it. You can go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say earlier, you know, when we were saying about why do you do certain things in a certain way, when we're doing that mental way, if it's hurting or it doesn't feel right. I think a lot of people, 
I think it might be a lot to do with ego when you're in a class because you just want it to do, do it that. Right, to do that. Yeah. That's what I'm supposed to be doing, so that's what I'm going to do instead of just doing your own practice. No, I'm just doing it. Do you understand what I mean? Like yeah, it's various reasons. Yeah, that's one of the reasons. But a lot of it is like, you know, you're not paying attention to yourself and even if you do feel you, sometimes people don't, you know, value themselves enough or they don't, you know, like listen to themselves or put themselves first. So, you know, they just, they just think, oh, oh um, even though I've got some kind of message, I better listen to that person who, you know, apparently knows more. Yeah. So, I guess what I'm saying to you guys is... Give yourself permission. Give us, yeah, give yourself the permission you know, to, yeah, listen to what the teacher is saying and also listen to your body and actually listen to your body first and always because the best teacher in the world for you is your body. There's no yoga teacher that's going to know more about your body than you because they're not in your body. And I can feel things and I can also feel someone. But even when I can do that, I still can't feel what it is like for them completely, 100%. Like if I was in their body. I can kind of guess, I can kind of feel. And that's helped me a lot. Like you know when we do assisting and you were asking about assisting, one of the things we do and we work on is like, okay, what would it feel like if I'm in that body with that kind of configuration of tightness and this and that, doing that pose right now? And I go, oh, that'll be tight shoulders. Okay, so let me go and work on the shoulders, for example. And I've trained myself to do that from just even assisting, for example, for many years, where I can go, oh, okay, that, and I'm not even thinking anymore. I just look at the posture and I go, that feels like, mm, okay, let me go and give him this assist. Okay, so then that comes with practice as well, because you practice feeling into you know, that person's posture. But even then, I can tell you, you know, it's not so fine-tuned and I don't know whether if it will ever, ever become fine-tuned so much like I'm actually in their body. <laughs> so in other words, what I'm saying is that no teacher, in my opinion, can tell you what you are feeling in your body. Only you can. Right? So, choose who you listen to. <laughs> You know, and choose which teachers you listen to and what you listen to as well. Me included. Take what works and adjust and modify what doesn't. And if something really doesn't work, throw it away. Do something different. And just because they're the teacher doesn't mean they are the authority over your body. Your body will tell you what it needs. Listen to that. The work though is to work out the difference between what your head is saying and your what your body is saying. That's where you need to develop and grow like your um, sensitivity, your acuity to where is this feedback coming from? Is it my head saying I don't want to do this pose? Or is it my body saying stop? <coughs> or slow down? Or pay attention? Or, come on, give me more, I want this. I need to strengthen this muscle. In Warrior 3, yes. when you put your hand down and then you open it so you're turning it out, I struggle, or when you, if you go to a block, I struggle to have the block in a line with my leg. Okay. It's always very out of whichever hand. Too much. Yes. So then I my, my turn my hips, but I then find that I can't. I'm in line enough. Okay. Okay, okay, breathe, breathe. Okay, so when you come in here, show me then what happens. So I naturally would put it here. And okay. It there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it doesn't feel steady enough. Yes. So now, I am the authority of yoga and if I say it's okay, then it's okay. So here, I'm giving you a stamp of approval. Stamp, that's okay. Okay, what's next? Okay, so now I need to rotate my hips. Did you get what I was trying to do there? Yeah. Who's the authority in yoga? No one. So it's fine. Better than your body? Yes. Okay, fine. <laughs> I was thinking yes. in order to rotate enough. No, to you can't do yoga anymore. Leave. Because you put your block there. 
It's like your body wants to balance that. It's okay. Here's the thing. If you balance there, and it's kind of hard for me to get in here because of the wall, but if you balance there and it goes and tweaks into your back or into your shoulder, then okay, so you need to modify something. But otherwise, cool. Do it. You don't need my approval, but we'll talk about it anyway. Go. Don't breathe though. It's really bad for you. Still don't breathe. I'm breathing just quiet. Are you in your head? Okay, right. It's just quiet. This is a new one. I should write it down in my book of <laughs> bullshit excuses. What else? That's it. You got it. Here, stay here for a second. I'm going to show you how you can do this more. Deep breaths. Breathe with her. That's it. Good. Now, feel your heel that's grounding down and squeeze the right side. She didn't fall once. <laughs> what was the difference there? I'm not putting enough weight forwards. Yeah. So I could feel that automatically. Yeah. And you were not squeezing so much your thigh muscles yeah. either. And for goodness I sake, breathe. please <laughs> breathe. Yeah. I know. Breathing is my... I know it's my number It's one. not a thing. You can breathe, right? <laughs> yeah. So just please breathe. Don't make it a bit, oh, it's because of, no, there's not, it's not. No, I know, I don't even realize, that's the problem. I know. That's the problem. That's what I'm telling you. That I need to keep reminding myself. I know. Someone the other day I met, oh, I was, yeah, that's right, I was in Dubai, I met one of my graduates and, and she was like, Dylan, but why in teacher training? You kept shouting at me. I said, because love, otherwise you wouldn't have heard it. Because you were so in your head. And I have to keep, I think I was shouting to her about the breath. I'm like, wake up, breathe. And she's like, oh, um, um. Otherwise, she's just somewhere else, the fairies. I'm like, and I start talking to her and she's like, huh? <laughs> what do you mean, huh? <laughs> Where have you been this whole conversation? I concentrate so much on what body part I'm trying to fo focus on. That I start yeah, you forget. I know. So it's, it's like a... It's, one of the it's, like you, it's like you are putting so much effort in and you're not the only one in this group. Listen carefully. You're putting so much effort in. You're trying so hard that you are getting in your own way. Mm -hmm. Right? And rather than trying so hard, and I know I talked about trying before, rather than trying so hard, try easy. Relax, it's already happening. They gave you a brace. Keep talking. Yeah, so um, it's just like this thing that pulls your shoulders I'm just going to poke around while you talk. Keep going. Um, so Relax your arms. And I've got like a band at desk. And Relax your arms. So it hurt all the time. So I, don't, I think I've like forgotten how to hold myself. You're it's broken. You forgot how to hold yourself. But is that just things I'm telling myself? Just no, relax this one second. You can keep talking, but so just relax. I am relaxed. Okay. <laughs> okay, good. You are relaxed, but there's stuff going on here. So, <coughs> tell me, what was the injury? Um, my brother pulled me up on a top bunk. I was like eight. So okay. He pulled my shoulder blade out, and I don't know what that's done. But now, I feel like I hold it all in my neck instead of in my back. Yeah, you kind of do. Mm -hmm. Keep breathing, deep breaths. And then bring your head this way. Breathe with her. There's more to be done there, but let's see. So if you raise your arms now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? I don't know. I fell in that seat Could have saved you and come to teacher training. Every morning, I've got like a little tip of my yoga mat, I've got a little oil, and I put it on, and, and it still doesn't work. <laughs> and then just, I don't know, how many seconds? What have you done? How do I do that? <laughs> so, okay, here, I'll show them as well if you turn around for a second. So she's got kind of, if you don't mind me using yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So she's got like a connective tissue, and please keep breathing. So right around there. So I was just kind of working out some of the tension around that. Deep breaths. And this tension is here to protect whatever the injury, you know, from the joint. When her little brother or big brother pulled her up, 
you know, in the bunker bed and her shoulder dislocated, so she just has a feeling probably every time she raises her arm, they're like, oh, I remember the thing when my arms were up, that wasn't good. So it's protecting her and keeping her safe. And now it's actually released the whole amount. It's really good, release. So it's connective tissue, trying to protect. And then this one here was I was just working on. You turn around for a second. This muscle. Mm. Pex. Mm. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Take a breath in. And breathe out. So it goes in there to release. Another breath in. Breathe out. Okay. No, it's not all pleasant. Okay. Now if you raise your arm. <laughs> <laughs> Look at her face. It's like it hurts. Oh. It just hurts like every day. Feels mad. Oh wow. Yes. Thank you. I can never get my shoulder back like that. That's weird. It's not weird. <laughs> so it's not like my bones or anything. It's like more no. muscle. Okay. Okay. Oh, cool. <laughs> 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 what do I do? What can I do then? So yeah. So that? you can take this hand yeah. and go around here. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So <laughs> you feel into the thing, and you know I'm always. It's a really good thing to do because I'm always feeling around, right? I'm going. Oh, okay. There's tension there in this muscle, and if we raise it up, and if we brought it back, and if we engaged it in what pose. What does that feel like? And can I soften this and engage that? Or can I engage? So I'm working around and I'm feeling, so my body's always teaching me and I'm like, oh wow, there's all of this tension. There's a line of energy down there and down this way. And if I work on that just for a few seconds, it releases a whole amount of tension that's going down. So like there is a line of energy that goes down this way and then another one down that way. So if I just go and work on that, can mm -hmm. you feel that? and hold and breathe and it looks, you know, I don't know, to some people maybe it looks like magic but it's just completely normal. I told you, magic and miracles are normal. <laughs> you believe me. <laughs> it's normal. We just think it's like, oh. <laughs> you are magic. You think about it. This body is a miracle. Like, we're a walking miracle. You don't even need to think. It's doing the breathing, it's doing heartbeats, it's doing the digestion, it's creating cells, it's you know, getting rid of toxins, it's balancing you know, hormones, it's doing all sorts of like millions of things are happening without you having to consciously think about it. This body is you know, a drop of the universe and how the universe is a miracle, we're a walking miracle. And we think we're separate from that. So we think, oh, that miracle... But actually, you are one. <laughs> you just, you know, we just, there's this separation. That's where all our suffering comes from. So, we still have a bit of time because we got here early. Um, and uh, that's the Loughborough Leisure Centre over there. And um, 7.30 uh, is our class, the master class. So, we've got a full house, it's sold out. And I've got some messages from people saying, you know, can I come? And, uh, my standard response is, just turn up, we'll find a space for you somehow. Mm. Um, and I've even had people go on my mat um, if they needed to, if there was no more wall space, and somehow make it work, because you know, it's all about the energy in the room. So, it's full house, and um, I've never taught in Loughborough, this is my first time. I think probably everyone, apart from the person who's hosting me here, you know, one person knows what, I'm, what I teach, so it'll be an interesting crowd, because you know, they don't know what to expect, probably. Um, they don't know my, I don't know, my way of teaching, my style, maybe. And um, it's going to, it's going to probably challenge them, you know, we'll have some good laughs. Um, and, you know, it's going to push them probably on some levels as well. Uh, but, it, yeah, we'll have fun. We'll have fun with it. Yeah, it's genius. Yeah. Look. I used to be able. I used to 
Oh, really? Wow. Yeah. I was measuring mats. You know, I've, I've looked at many yeah, studio spaces before. So I can just go into a room and guess how many mats. Because that's the currency. So, you know, like when I start working with studio owners, um, I can tell, you know, like I've looked at ceilings and this and that, all the different kind of requirements, wood floors, and what's needed. Like you look at a space and go, right, so this many mats means this much revenue per year, you know, for, for, the, for the business or how we can, whether they can actually work, whether I can monetize it, because I've looked at many, many, many spaces over the years. Everyone just went quiet suddenly. Please turn around to anyone around you, say hello, find out one thing that was amazing about their day today. We have about two minutes before we start and I'm going to test you. So you better find out. All right, if you're, if you're finished, give them a high five or a hug or a handshake. <laughs> you want to be very British, you can just give them a handshake. Oh. <laughs> well, welcome and uh, thank you for having me here and you know, Elaine has put this together. Um, I have a tendency when I'm in front of groups to talk a lot, so I'm actually going to cut that really short and just get started and get moving. Let's get started and get started in where you are right now seated, the soles of the feet touching, knees apart, so you're in Baddha Konasana. And then take the hands out behind you, pressing fingertips to the ground and we'll start off with uh, a warming breath, a heating breath called Kapalabhati. Kapalabhati, if your nose is blocked, then do it through your mouth. But if your nose is not blocked, then do it through your nose. So.